The new super apostles have come to power. Matthew 23 and verse 2 reads, The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses, or in the seat of Christ in present-day Christianity. The new super apostles have indeed come to power and have quite possibly crept in the back door of your very congregation unaware. This new movement, entitled the New Apostolic Reformation, founded by C. Peter Wagner, a veritable carbon copy of the shepherding movement of the 70s and 80s that caused hundreds of thousands of innocent Christians to stumble seriously in their Christian faith requiring several years to recover from, has come back once again. These new super apostles that now number in the thousands that have spread their influence like wildfire over the last several years infiltrating a vast majority of present-day primarily charismatic and Pentecostal circles. My challenge to these so-called apostles who are so quick to assert their false apostolic authority, spend a year in a third world country like Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan, or China, India, and there promote your pseudo-apostolic ministry and see how successful you are in establishing a church there and be willing to be taken prisoner away from your wife and your children, to have your property taken from you, and to even face a death sentence in your ministry intending the flock of God. As the Apostle Paul did in actual practice and not in empty rhetoric. And maybe then I might begin to believe you do indeed have an apostolic calling upon your life. Until then, please do the greater body of Christ to include yourself a great favor by seeking the mercy of God in a spirit of brokenness and repentance for the spiritual pride that has arrested you? This new apostolic reformation is nothing more than a carbon copy of the apostolic movement of the 70s and 80s that spread like wildfire, experiencing stellar-like growth virtually overnight and lasting for approximately 15 years that would eventually implode both from the inside and from without only after bringing reproach upon the greater body of Christ, only to vanish just as quickly as it appeared. In 2 Corinthians 11, verses 12 through 15, a true apostle of Christ, Paul, would write, But what I am doing I will continue to do so that I may cut off opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the matter about which they are boasting as apostles. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it's not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. The chief shepherd, Messiah Jesus, whom we call Christ, was most emphatic in warning of false prophets that would precede the second coming. The apostle Paul, a true apostle and follower of Jesus Christ, warned that Satan would reveal himself as an angel of light with stunning and cunning-like deception that, if possible, would even deceive the elect of God, those closest to God. The prophet Jeremiah experienced the same spiritual state of apostasy and deception before the God of Israel intervened in the affairs of his covenant people with great judgments, as found in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 31. The prophets, or preachers, prophesy falsely, and the priests, or ministers, they rule on their own authority, and my people love it so. But what will you do at the end of it? These super apostles who, because of their unbelief and disobedience to the word of God, and rather preferring their own teachings, having done nothing more than preached another gospel, and in so doing have distilled for themselves and their followers an intoxicating spiritual drink that intoxicates those who partake of this addictive like wine, resulting in a state of spiritual drunkenness, apathy, a spiritual sleep, that no longer trust in the Christ-centered word of God, but rather preferring the leaven or teachings of the Pharisees of present-day religious men, with teachings that lull its partakers into a spiritual sleep and slumber 
and of false security. I think of a true story that illustrates the deception of these new apostles and their teachings. Back in the late 1800s, there was a new, there was a crew, rather, there was a crew of workers that were working on a barge on a river in upstate New York. The barge was well secured to the shore with ropes, and after a long, hard day at work had grown tired and had fallen asleep on this barge. And wouldn't you know it, the security of this barge would quietly and suddenly be disturbed, only to awaken to find that somehow their barge had broken free from its moorings attached to these ropes, only to find themselves in the very middle of this river and well caught up in its rapid undercurrents. Normally such a discovery wouldn't be of great and immediate concern, but this river just so happened to be the Niagara River, and they were just a short distance away from the Great Niagara Falls. This is precisely the case with the New Apostolic Reformation. On a barge that was once thought to be secure, comfortably anchored to the shore according to their own understanding, but the unexpected occurred, only to find themselves a short distance from the very edge of the Niagara Falls. I emphasize falls. These new, these new apostles' teachings can be compared to these falls to these workers who had fallen asleep on the job just a short distance from the Niagara Falls or the second coming of the chief shepherd, the true head of the body of Christ, the chief apostle himself. You might say, well, I've never heard of this new apostolic reformation or see Peter Wagner. Well, be informed that one of their apparent key strategies in luring in unsuspecting pastors is with a most enticing temptation or bait-like carrot, with the proposition to existing pastors, have you considered that God may have called you to not simply be a pastor, but rather an apostle? No longer content with the responsibility that comes from being a pastor, as though that office wasn't of great responsibility enough, but rather appealing to ambitious and power-hungry leaders, this recruiting technique has proven to be most successful in bringing major well-established ministries, most you would readily recognize, successfully to the new apostolic reformation bandwagon. To include a very popular and prominent spiritual leader whose ministry is headquartered in Lancaster County, located in South Central Pennsylvania. Many of these apostolic pastors after jumping on the new apostle bandwagon, will keep such a dramatic newfound calling low-key and under wraps, fearing what their members might think should they be too aggressive or premature in unveiling their apostolic calling and teachings. So don't be surprised if you haven't heard of the new apostolic reformation movement or see Peter Wagner, at least at the grassroots level, but be alerted, particularly if you frequent a charismatic Pentecostal congregation, a prime target of their efforts. For these apostolic pastors of this new apostolic reformation will typically bring their newfound apostolic callings and teachings to bear through the back door, as it were, gradually and slowly, so as to not disturb the existing spiritual momentum that they have worked so hard to establish. If you sense or know of someone who may be affected by one of these false apostles or just simply have an interest in being better informed regarding this false teaching, be at liberty to contact me for a detailed expose on this deceptive new apostolic reformation movement. My name is Bob Brunette of House of David and Friends, a watchman ministry. You can con contact me via email t. Dove T, that's T D O V E T, at gmail.com. God bless you.